Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, let's talk about the pocket cooker wood stove. Stay tuned. The pocket cooker wood stove is a wood stove that was originally designed by the Israeli army and it's been brought of course over to the United States and has been used uh, various times and places different manufacturers and uh, you can get these sometimes on the secondary market uh, brand new they were only about twelve to fifteen dollars uh, it does come in a nice nylon bag it has a belt loop on the back and velcro fasten the pouch shut. That's important because a wood stove is going to get a lot of soot and ash and dirt on it and so you need something to keep it in. It is rubberized so you're not going to get a lot of leak through on the ash and dirt into your pack. And so uh, pulling it out, uh, I've had this one for several years, I've used it quite a bit. It's pretty compact and flat and uh, basically uh, it just folds out and you open it up and it's got, it's hinged and so some of you are familiar with this. And so it opens up like this, and then it has these two flaps inside that fold down. And uh, it's got little pins on the bottom where it fastens in, and so it sets slightly off the ground, and then you've got these areas here for your pot to sit on. Uh, it also has a door here, and it's where you feed the fire from, and then you can actually set this down like that in order for you to uh, feed the fire and also to increase the airflow. It does have holes in the sides here uh, for airflow as well as of course uh, the bottom is open and off the ground. So this is a really neat stove. It weighs one and a half pounds which seems like a lot of weight. It's not titanium, it's not aluminum, it's actually steel. And uh, the only thing you might want to do with this is of course you want to keep it out of the weather. Being steel it will rust and you also might want someday to you know clean it up and spray it with high temperature uh, paint uh, just paint it black again and uh, just to, you know maybe a little oil on the hinges now and then to make sure that it doesn't rust and bind up if you're out in a lot of very wet weather I've used this a lot but I've used this a fair amount and as you can see it's, it's pretty used and it's heat scorched but uh, I had a question from one of my viewers as to how to actually use this and how to keep the fire going they're having some trouble with it so uh, this is uh, for you all and I just want to demonstrate this today and show you how efficient this is as well as a couple of uh, other tips uh, when you're cooking with a small wood stove. So to get our stove going I just pulled off some dead maple branches. None of this is very big. Uh, the largest one is about the diameter of my, of my small pinky finger here. So uh, you don't have to have great big huge wood. Now you can use pine cones and you can use all kinds of stuff, but I find that the best thing is to get, uh, of course, a bunch of twigs to get it started and then also you want to have enough sticks to feed the fire. You don't want great big stuff because uh, it's a small stove and you want to keep the fire going. So let's get started. So one of the first things that I've done is I've taken a couple of flat stones here and I've placed it here where we can have some airflow underneath because one of the things that happens with these kinds of stoves is the reason they go out is they don't get good airflow. And so you don't have to have it split like this. It could be a solid stone. But make sure that you don't have a lot of fluff and debris. Of course, you should always clear out, you know, a good clean fire space for your fire. And so that's a really good thing to know uh, about wood stoves is you have to have proper airflow if you want to keep them going. All right, so in our haversack here, we have a few items that are important of course. We have our, our fire kit and a knife, flashlight. This is just my woods wandering kit that I carry for just short distances. But what I have here is I have a small just kit put together uh, for just something hot to drink. I've got a red handkerchief. This is to grab a hold of the handles. This is a standard uh, Sierra cup and you can get these just about anywhere. It's just a bottle of water and a couple of packets of uh, spiced apple cider. So here's a tip for you. When you are going out in the woods and you're going to be using a wood stove or cooking over a wood fire, a lot of times your cookware will get uh, really burned. Now I've never used this one over a, uh, a wood fire before. If I have, I've cleaned it off really well. Uh, I could tell I've used it because it's got some burn spots on it. But anyway, 
Find a, just a small bar of soap, and you should always have some kind of soap with you anyway, just to keep clean. But what you could do is you take this soap, and I try to keep the package intact so I can put it back in when I'm done. But basically what you want to do is you want to take your soap, and you want to smear it all over your cookware. Okay? Especially the bottom. You don't have to do the sides where you're going to be drinking. But the bottom here, and uh, just, just really, really coat it good. Okay? And uh, what this does is this helps prevent the ashes and, and the soot from building up on your pot. And when you get done, you just literally take it and you wash it off. And the soot will stick to the soap and not to your pan. So you want to you wanna do this around the bottom here. Again, we don't want to go up high because we don't want soap into our, our, uh, you know, our mouth and lips where we're, we're drinking or eating. So just around the bottom and uh, that'll be sufficient. Make sure you get the corners really well also. And that should be sufficient. You can kind of see what I've done there. Alright. And it'll sit just like that. Put the soap back in there. I want to keep it from getting all nasty. So the next thing we want to do, got that soaked and ready, we'll just set it aside, is we want to start the fire. And of course, you've seen me in enough videos to know that my, my preferred method, I'm, I almost always use uh, some uh, cotton ball soaked with petroleum jelly and a few slivers of fat wood. Uh, of course, you can do it in many other ways. You can make wood curls and you can start things, but I just find that this is an easy and convenient way, uh, especially for like this, I'm just doing demonstration purposes and I'm not really practicing any skills. So uh, all you wanna do is you can put this up here and get it ready. We get our slivers of fat wood out. And these are not great big huge sticks. So just uh, some smaller pieces here, as you can see. And I just take regular fat wood and split it for that. And then, uh, so we're gonna light it here. I'm gonna let it drop down in there. Fairly easy process. Set just right here. All right, there we go. We'll dump that down in there. I'm gonna open this up and then just use our fat wood here and put it in there on top, get it burning. I'll show you what that looks like. So this is what we have. We have our fat wood burning, we've got the lid up. You can see, just like fat wood of course, does, uh, does quite well. Now that we've got our fat wood burning well, we're gonna take these small twigs and we're gonna start feeding them into the fire. And uh, you just wanna do this normally, just as you would. We're just gonna stick this bundle of twigs right on top of the fat wood, using this opening here, it's keeping it open. And uh, we're using our small twigs, get it started. Of course, dry, small twigs, you listen for that snap. You want to leave them long enough, though, that a little bit sticks out this end. And uh, get that going good. And you want to kind of fill this up, I find, with, with these smaller twigs. So you want to make sure that you've got plenty in there uh, to get it going. One of the mistakes, I believe, that people make with this kind of stuff is they don't get a good sufficient bed of coals. Uh, you really don't want to cook over... Uh, a big flame, you're trying to generally get a bed of coals to cook on. I mean, you can, you can keep a flame going, it's not going to hurt anything. Let's go ahead and let this build for a while. I'll keep feeding it, then I'll get back to you when ready to boil our water. But as you can see already, we've got a, a pretty serious flame going here. And I'm just going to, like I said, just keep feeding this until we get a good good fire going all the way. We now have a pretty good burn going and I've left this cover up until it gets that way. I want maximum airflow this way and out through the front so it has a little bit of like a rocket stove effect. And then uh, very carefully you can take and put that down because obviously that would interfere with our uh, 
our pot boiling. We've got really good flame coming up there and uh, if you want to look down inside you can see that we have a good pile of wood and embers. We've got a coal bed going down there in the bottom and this will burn for quite a while just like this. So that's basically how you get it started and most wood stoves are like this but each wood stove has its own unique uh, issues if you will. Uh, some burn different than others and you have to learn what your particular stove does and how it acts and reacts. And so uh, we're just gonna put some water here and then set it on top. When that gets boiling we'll get back with you. So while this is burning you'll notice that sometimes the uh, the sticks will fall out from this end and uh, you can lift this back up and I would encourage you to take all of the sticks that fall out and go ahead and put them back in and uh, just keep that burn going real good keep shoving those in there just like that of course try not to burn yourself alright and the trick to keeping this burning is you have to make sure like I said, that you have a good bed of coals and good airflow, and then also a good supply of twigs, which I still have over here. And so if you want to keep your burn going, which we still have quite a few flames under there, but just keep feeding it twigs from time to time. And uh, that'll, that'll do you well. And it's like I said, with most uh, wood stoves and wood fires, but because this uses really small twigs, uh, you want to make sure that you uh, don't let it just burn out. And so one of the things, again about fire it's all about preparation you got to make sure that you have sufficient wood in there and what happens a lot of times with these stoves because they're twigs is they'll burn out from the bottom and then the fire won't reach up high enough to continue the burn and you also have ashes dropping out the bottom which is it's okay but uh, which is how the you know how the airflow and all that but you want to every once in a while take a stick and kind of push down in here So here we have our little stove, and it's uh, coming to a rolling boil. It's got a little bit of debris in there, but we're not too worried about that. But this is what we have down inside, and a real good bed of coals. And what you have to be careful about, of course, with a stove like this, is you want to make sure that you keep feeding it. And I've got a little pile of sticks, you know, some small twigs and some larger stuff here. Again, about the diameter of my little finger and uh, you don't really need much bigger than that but you do have to keep feeding a stove like this and alternate between the smaller twigs and the larger because it does keep burning down and then you're going to have some ash that's going to be dropping out the bottom but we have a really good boil going right now so I'm going to put in our, our powder and have some hot apple cider alright so one thing I didn't tell you is normally when I am cooking or using this stove I almost always leave this flap open uh, I just feel like I get, it get it burns quicker, but I get a little better airflow, uh, obviously. So, all right, let's put this in here. Oh, all right, a little bit of a overboil there. I knew that was going to happen. I did it anyway. All right, not a problem. Plenty of hot water here anyway. All right, there we go. Now I just whittled a stick here, and uh, this nice thing about these Sierra Cup handles is they stick out far enough that they stay fairly cool, and so we just uh, stir it up a little bit here. That's the other thing you got to watch out for with these kind of stoves, is uh, if, your, if your base isn't real sturdy and this one's got a little bit of wobble to it, uh, you can actually spill some water in there. And, uh, or your soup or whatever so you have to be careful uh, because this is fairly wide but when you have a small cup and, and the base is not super super wide stance you just have to be cautious all right there we go well we've got our nice hot drink here We're by the creek the beautiful colors of the leaves the sun sparkling off of the water Just perfect for a afternoon trek out in the woods, enjoying the beautiful fall temperature and the colors. 
and a nice cup of uh, hot apple cider. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. Please like, share, and subscribe. Check out the links in the description box below and make sure and press the bell button to stay notified of all of our upcoming videos and we'll talk to you next time.